This is the plaintiff, Ernest Jackson. He says he bought a new suit and brought it to the defendant to have it altered. And after multiple attempts, the guy couldn't tailor it correctly. In fact, his new suit is now ruined. He had to buy another suit. And he wants the $1,000 he's owed. So he's suing for it. This is the defendant, Nicholas Harper. He says he did everything he could to make the plaintiff happy. But the wishy-washy guy kept changing his mind about the fit he was looking for. The defendant says he even bought the plaintiff a new suit. But nothing can satisfy this guy. So now it's up to the judge to decide who's in the right and who's in the wrong. He's accused of sewing himself into a corner. All parties, please raise your right hands. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Jackson, what's going on? Your Honor, thank you for taking our case. Um, as you know, uh, emergencies can happen, mistakes can happen, but the conclusion is that if we're in business, we, gotta must, we must remain professional and work with integrity to, to remain at the top of our game. Okay. And so, uh, I had a very, very important celebration in my life that ha was happening September the 26th. I'm what, sorry. Was, what was that celebration? I was in installation uh, service. I, was, I took a position to become a new pastor okay. uh, of, a, of a local church here in, uh, in um, Ohio. Okay. And uh, it's a pretty big day, of course, for me and the church and those and my family members who were a part of it. And so uh, I bought a suit and took it to uh, Nick on uh, August the 2nd. And how I went to Nick was because I was on Facebook and saw a very good friend of mine supporting Nick and said how good of a job he did. So matter of fact, so I went to Nick. I was very impressed with the store and his window. Very impressed. Matter of fact, the shirt that I'm wearing today is the shirt that he made. He made this shirt. So my idea was only to support him. Okay, so what went wrong with the suit tailoring? So I took him a suit, and so sure enough, we put it on, and, and, and so he suggested, let's raise the sleeves one inch. And so I thought about that, and I texted him and said to him, do not take it up an inch, take it, take it only a half an inch, only half an inch. August the 3rd, he replied, good morning, no problem. So when I go and pick up the suit on, on the 7th, one sleeve is longer than the other. Okay. So he simply says, no problem. I can fix that. No problem at all. Let's do, do, do so. So I go back and pick up the suit. I pay him for the alterations. And so I only focused on the sleeves. I did not focus on anything else on, on the suit. Why? When I take the suit home. I'm sorry. Why didn't you focus on anything else? Because I, I didn't think anybody, I didn't think, I mean, you were paying imagine. him to do more than sleeves. You were paying him to do all kinds yes. of things. So then you're Absolutely. standing there, you're sporting the suit, you got a three-sided three mirror, you're looking at yourself. How, how are you not focusing on any other part of it? Well, I was, I, I just, I could not imagine what I was going to see next. I could not imagine. So I did not see this or realize this till I got home. And when I got home, I showed my friends this, this, this suit that I'm excited about and how he changed the sleeves. I turn and, and they're standing behind me. They said, Jack, do you know your black suit is sewn together with white thread? I said, no way. You kidding. I take the suit off. I um, hold the suit up like this. And, this, and he sewed the, the stitch from the center in white thread. Nick Sibley says to me, I can fix that. No problem at all. Then no problem. But did, he, got did, he, did, he mention, did he say why he had sewn it with a white thread? I did not ask him that. I just looked at his machine over to my left and he had a white thread. All right, so go on. So I said to Nick, I said, Nick, um, I said, when I took this suit home, should I have put placed it in, in, in the cleaners first? He said, no, 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 no. You should have worn that suit that night. I said, thank you for saying that. Because he did not sew the hem together and it was absolutely wrinkled at the bottom crazy. And we have a white thread in the center of it. I can fix that, no problem. So, so, so we take the white thread out, and now we have a crease, a V crease 
in a sinner. Not only that, forgive Wait, me. I don't understand. We, Why do we have a V crease? If we just because, change a thread, we shouldn't, everything will be fine. Nope, you're absolutely right, Your Honor, but this is the problem. He didn't take it in from the side. He pulled, he pulled the back together. So when you pull the, the back together and you earn that, now you have a crease that's made in the back of the suit. Do you have a picture of what you're talking about? I can show you a suit and, and explain it to you better. So what he did was, instead of taking it from the side, taking it from the side, he pulled it together within here. He pulled it together and sewed it like this. Was there a seam on the jacket in question? No, no, no. He, he created this seam. Okay, so there was never a seam in the, in the back center and he created the seam. Mr. Harper, do you have the jacket with you? I do. Can I see it? Can I see the back of the jacket? All right, so um, let me, I'm gonna come closer. All right, can you pull it a little bit away? All right, so the seam that I'm looking at in the center, is that something you created or something that was already in the suit and you just took no, it in? No, that's the original seam in the back of the suit. Can you, can you uh, lift the jacket uh, up slowly, slowly so that I could see the seam? Yeah, I see the seam in the back of the suit. All right, there's a seam in the back of the suit. He may um, have taken it in and it caused some hump you don't like, but he didn't create the seam in the center of the suit, Mr. Jackson. So what happens? You tell him that you need him to change it again because something is wrong, because what? What's, the, what's, what's happening that you don't like that you send it back to him? That press seam that he placed in there remained there. It, it was... It was mar it's a but it remained there injury. after what? Did you change how the, the way you wanted the fit to be? Did you decide it was too oh, tight? Oh, none of that. None okay. of that. I just, want, I just wanted it to be that you could not see the seam that he had created by, by sewing it together from the center. Okay, you're suggesting that he cut the suit in half in the center and created a seam from head to toe on that suit oh. that was never there? No, ma'am. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. Not, I'm not saying that at all. What are but you I saying? am saying... What he did was he took half of this suit here, half of this suit here, and sewed it together. Okay. So when you sewed it together, you now you now press this down, you press this together. Okay. Now when you say, oh, I made a mistake, and also it creates a roll in the in the collar. It creates a roll. So when we have this roll in the back of this collar, he then says to me, I have to pay him to remove a roll in my collar that he created. The role wasn't there. Let me ask you, Mr. Harper, for what reason were we letting out, did he change his mind on the style or was he trying to get rid of that bunching in the collar? So originally um, we, we went with taking the jacket in. He said he usually doesn't do that, but he would try it. So we went ahead and tried that. And then when he brought it back and mentioned the role, I was explaining to him that when you change the shape of the jacket, sometimes it creates that role until you try it on to know that you need to make that adjustment. So he said, no, let's just let it back out to the original way it was. So when I let it back out, that's what created that crease. So that was his decision was to in. let it back out to how it was. It was not, you right. could have fixed the row and kept it tight. Right. But he, he said instead of paying more to get the row fixed, he would rather just let it back to the original. But why, would he, why should was. he have to pay more to get the row fixed? Well, normally what happens is you don't find the row until the person tries the jacket on for the fitting. Listen, I don't so know what we're calling a row. I don't know what magical thing everybody's describing as a row. But if I go to a tailor and all of a sudden when they do it, it's still not right, then they just redo it. They do it until it gets right because I pay the tailor to get it right. I don't pay the tailor um, to get it partially right and then pay him more to get it right. My body is my body is my body. If I gained weight then, hey, now the poor guy's got to do double work, <laughs> all right? Or if I lose weight, which kept happening with my wedding dress, and only with my wedding dress, um, because then I was married, you know? So, and, uh, but uh, what I don't get is why the, the guy should have to pay to get, pay you more to get the row out. The row shouldn't be there. So if you're, if you're giving him a quote for t a tailored jacket, it should include whatever work you might have to do if it pops up. Normally, what, it doesn't happen that way if that row is not something so the row is a cause of the shape of the jacket changing I, i'm not interested in that body. if you suggest let's tailor it like this it needs to be perfectly tailored like that i don't really there's nothing well, I, it, I, there's nothing about the jacket that's evil or 
uh, or wrong or whatever else. It, it's either it's either it, it's something that can be done with the jacket or it can't. So don't suggest it to him if you don't think you can handle it. I think you can handle it. It just seemed like a lot of work, and he seemed like a very high maintenance customer. You know, because he because you know you had to keep at it as opposed to you know, get him out and get a new client in. So, but that sometimes happens, you know? So you quote him how much to fix the row? I, I never got to give him a quote because he said, never mind, let's just let it out. And I said, okay, no problem. We'll, right. we'll just but, let it back out. But did he say, never mind? He didn't say, never mind, let's just let it out because he changed his mind on the style. He said that because you told him you were going to charge him more to make it right. All right, so then what happens with the suit? It's uh, coming up on your big day. You're supposed to pick it up on September 20. What day are you well, supposed my, my to pick it up? My big day was September the 26. This 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 whole ordeal began August the second. Yeah, but by the time you tell him, never mind, let's let it out. What day is it? August the seventh. I'm just trying to figure out what, how we get from August seventh to September 22nd. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. Each time, Your Honor, we got it. Got so close to the date that when I went in, each time I went into the store to pick up my jacket, the crease was there. He explained, I'm trying to get this out. Mr. Jackson, do this for me. Take your jacket to a cleaners because my iron is not strong enough to get this crease out. Take it to a So he had already he them. had already let it out, but the crease was showing. Well, that's why it's the crease still was showing. showing. And so you take so it to a cleaners, it. and the cleaners can't get it out. Yes, that, well, that part is true. I, I, he, they press it. They only press it. But this is what I want to hear, Honor. I take it back to him, and this is what he says to me. Where did you take this jacket to? I say to him, thank you for saying that, because this is beneath professionalism at its best. You yourself know that this quality of work is poor. I haven't taken this jacket to no place other than who you instructed me to, to take it to the cleaners and have them press it. Now, based upon your words, we cannot do this. When do you take it back to him after the cleaners? August the 24th. Okay, and so you take it back to him and what's the plan now? He said he's gonna work on it. He said, I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna work on more on, on correcting this problem. All right, so Mr. However, Ms. Mr. Harper, how, what, what did you do after August 22nd to quote, correct the problem? So the issue that we were having was the, when the lining was sewn back down, the thread had come out. So I was supposed to re-sew the lining back down and then work on getting that crease out. And so how did you do that? I just pressed it more. Uh, I pressed it a few more times because I knew that it would probably take a few more times because the, the crease that was in there was so hard in there that it would take a few more times for the crease to come out. Right, but how does it take a few more weeks? Like if it may, takes a few more times of pressing, so you press and then it cools up, then you press in the same day. Like I'm wondering why it takes so long. Well, originally he came back, he decided that let's just scrap that. I would rather just have the jacket replaced. So the day he said he would rather have the jacket replaced, I stopped work on the jacket because he said, let's just replace it. Okay, so you were willing to do that. What happened? The agreement was that we would split the cost because he had the pants of the jacket. And since only the jacket needed to be yeah, replaced, Yeah, but he doesn't need he two said, pants. I, he doesn't need two of the same. Did you agree to split the cost of, an, uh, of the suit, Mr. Jackson? No, we're not, okay. we didn't agree So to why would that. he? Why should he be out another 300 and something dollars? Like, I wouldn't split it. So did you, try, did you buy the suit again or no? I did. And originally when he asked me, he said, look, I know that only the jacket is the issue. So I will meet you halfway and give you half for it. I Why said, would he okay, do that? No then problem. he'd be out 300 and something dollars for the jacket that you're unable to. I don't understand why people didn't go back to the original was... plan, tighten it up and get rid of the roll. That's what I'm not understanding. Why didn't, it, why didn't we just do that, Mr. He's, Harper? He said because of time, he didn't want to keep like dealing with the know. time. I'm on August 22nd. There's a whole month left. I don't see why that couldn't just happen. I told him that it could still happen, but he but said he understood. But for free, where you, where that, he doesn't have to pay for a roll. Right. It was. I told him that I wasn't charging him anything extra for it. But at the time, he said I under. He understood that I was also working on a wedding at the time, and he knew that it was a time crunch. So rather than deal with. So what ends up happening, more, uh, Mr. Jackson? On the twenty second of September, you go to you. You are attempting to pick up the jacket. The event is on the twenty sixth, and what happens? So when I go pick up this jacket, when I go, thank you for picking up at that wedding, he had not touched my jacket. It still wasn't ready. 
He so what did he tell you to, to do? It. He told me he was going to work on it. I said, I'll be back to so, pick it up. So what day do you go back to pick it up? I go back as, as I, I'm now going to September, Your Honor. When I go into September, he tells me that his he, uh, his mom is sick. This is on what day? And it was September. Uh, September. September. I'm September twenty third. All right, your event is I'll now in me. three forgive days. Me. He tells you, "My mom is sick. Please pray for her." And what happens? The next day, uh, his mom passes away. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Harper. So you text him to try to pick up the suit, and he tells you that his mother passed away. And mm. then what happens? So I said, "I'm I, I'm hoping in the midst of your sadness." that you are able to make possible for me to get my garment today, that I can, I can get my pants fitted for the service just a day away. And does he respond? He replied, I ask you not to communicate with me and do not talk to me again. I was insensitive to his grieving and he did not want me to communicate with him again. Right. And I did not. So on September, on October the 13th, well past the event, he still has my jacket. He has not sent a letter, a phone call. He's grieving. You asked me not to communicate with you. However, I want to attempt this last time to settle our issue. But if, but if all fail this way, our conclusion will be court. And did he respond to that? No, ma'am. Okay, which is why we're here. All right, um, you're suing for $1,000, uh, 695 for the cost of the suit. You paid $85 for alterations? Yes. All right, uh, and an extra 220, I guess, to get you to the 1,000 uh, called waste of time. Um, Mr. Harper, I'm so sorry for the passing of your mom, the very untimely passing of your mom. And I, I'm, I can certainly understand how you feel that someone talking to you about a suit at a moment like that, especially a pastor, might have offended your sensibilities and it would offend mine too. I get what, what you feel about that. You have to understand though that I'm in court here today to uphold law and contract law and obligations under a verbal contract. So, mm -hmm. It, it's not like he was rude about it, and it, you may be a one-man show, but sometimes a show has to go on, and maybe there was somebody else you could send so he could get his suit so he could make his day happen. Um, I'm sorry they don't sell the jacket alone. Uh, I, think, um, I think you had the right idea when you were ready to buy the jacket. Um, the fact that they don't sell it alone is not his fault. Um, I think the jacket was ruined by the back and forth, and that'll sometimes happen. And do you agree that he paid you $85 in alterations? Yes. Okay. Um, I am going to order the amount that will make uh, Pastor Jackson whole, which is $780. That's the cost of the suit, so he can replace the suit, uh, and the return of the money he paid you for alterations. That means the suit that is in your possession since you're, mm -hmm. as, since you're paying for it, um, stays in your possession. Okay, that is my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So the plaintiff is gonna get money, not the $1,000 he was actually seeking. Mr. Harper, let me ask you, how do you feel about the judge's decision, the way she worked it out? You seem to be okay with it, are you? Yes, I, I believe it was fair uh, from a legal standpoint. All right. Think you've learned anything from this whole experience with this picky customer? Uh, to make sure that when they know that once they leave the, the building with whatever the garment is, that everything is approved so that we don't have this issue and to get things in writing. Yeah, boy. Well, you've learned something valuable. Good for you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jackson, how about you? You, you? you okay now? How are you feeling? I'm happy worked out. I wish the best. For, for Nick, as I said, I support him and his business as long as we can remain professional and with integrity. All right. Thank you so much, Harvey. Doug, an interesting case because usually when somebody doesn't do an adequate job, the customer has to give the person at least one attempt to fix it. In this case, by giving him more than one attempt, the plaintiff proved his case because the defendant couldn't do it and the suit got ruined. My ex-boyfriend said he would fix my scooter. He took it, but he never returned it. I found it at his house outside under the snow. Now it won't start. I need it for transportation. 
Can I sue him for the damages? Well, they say hell hath no fury like a scooter scorned, right? <laughs> And in this case, we kind of need to know, did the thing run when she brought it to him? That's right. pretty important, well, because right? Because she says he was going to fix it. Yeah, he was going to fix it. Maybe it didn't start before. But when you give something to someone like this um, to store it, to fix it, to do improve it, uh, that's called a bailment in law. And this is one you would call a gratuitous bailment, where the bailor, which is the ex-girlfriend, brings to the ex-boyfriend the bailee, her scooter, so and you're because we're assuming that he isn't charging her to pay. It. Right. I, I don't know I if he's an ex by the time they have this. Uh, Who knows? Right. Yeah. Right? But in that circumstance, because there's no mutual benefit here, it's just her giving him something, and he's going to fix it and make it better for her. Right. He gets nothing out of it. He only owes a slight duty of care under the law. It's not even a reasonable duty of care. So. You know, leaving it out in the snow, maybe maybe really doesn't even matter that it got snow on well, it. Well, and, and I think the timing uh, matters, too. Like, right. did this happen? Like, they're dating, then they break up, and then yeah. uh, you see her with another girl eight months later, and then you remember the scooter, and right. you're like, how, how much time right. did she let you really pass? Want, you want to know the backstory. Yeah, I do. I really want the backstory <laughs> like, on this. the scooter. What really Come here, is girlfriend. Going on what here? exactly happened here? Because there's, it's, you know, the way it's, yeah. it's phrased, you know, if, if you, if he's your ex-boyfriend, he yeah. takes it to fix it, the, and a week later, you see it under the snow. What difference did that make? Right. If it was under the snow for months and months, well, why'd you leave it there for months and months? Right. Um, so, and and why wasn't it working to begin with? So, um, yeah, yeah, well, just depends on the circumstances. Right. She's gonna get. She's got the scooter back now, and uh, hopefully, she gets it running. Yeah, right. she's got the scooter back, but not the boy. <laughs> right.